Let's talk about Ninja Turtles because yeah. the new movies in the theaters. Midas, have you had a chance to check out Mutant Mayhem yet? I haven't seen it yet. I'm gassed to see it. I can't lie. Ooh. It's a it's a good time. It definitely like it, it it goes especially hard if you're like a just a you know brain damaged adult with lots of '90s nostalgia. Uh, but we did a little a little '90s week last week for for IGN and uh, or maybe the week before. I don't know. I don't know what month it is. What time um, is time? But we uh, I wrote a thing about the original TMNT arcade cabinet, which mm -hmm. uh, I I feel like you know that's a that's a cool throwback that we have lots of fond memories for. It's a it's a great thing. But like actually picking into why that game is like special and why it's significant. There's a lot there. Uh, as far as I can tell, that is the that is the second four player co op beat 'em up game. Period. And it's like that. I mean, Double Dragon came out like a few years prior, mm -hmm. and there was one other game that was also made by Konami called like Crime Fighters that came out a few months before this did. But like the idea of just and it basically a new genre of game yeah. being being out there and then heading to the arcade and being like. Oh my God! They adapted my favorite cartoon into this game. Like it's just, mm -hmm. it's it's completely like it's super. It's it fits. It makes perfect sense. Like there's, I mean, we have like we have other you know co-op games like The Simpsons and X Men and all that. But like it makes perfect sense with Ninja Turtles because there has to be four of them. There yep. always are four of them. Mm -hmm. You know, unless three of them die and then the other one has to carry on a mission of revenge. But that's another game, maybe someday. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I wanted to sort of think about just the. I, I wish that we'd get more kind of, mi I don't want to say like mid-range, but I guess like sort of double A games that are licensed games that aren't cash grabs, that are more like love letters. Like Shredder's Revenge was clearly made with just extreme attention to that original arcade game and mm -hmm. Turtles in Time and that just that that vibe. And, you know, it had some modern sensibilities and it's, you know, they're continuing to add stuff to it. But it's, I, I mean, it's, it's such a, it's such a cool, like it's a, it's a rarity. It is. And it's like they could have just made a royalty free beat em up that wasn't about turtles, that was just original characters or whatever, and probably saved some money. But it also might not have gotten anyone's attention because it doesn't have that, you know, that mass license. appeal. Yeah. And I don't know. We've, we've also gotten like, we just got Disney Illusion Island, which is, mm -hmm. again, just like a throwback platformer, modern art style. But yeah, I really, I want more of these. I hope they're doing well enough to justify them because, like, it seems like kind of a gold mine because, you know, there, it's a huge risk for, a license holder or a video game publisher to be like, we're going to do a quadruple a Spider-Man game. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's, that's not a, like not everything can be Arkham Asylum. Like it's, it's too risky. And like to see some smaller stuff like this, that that's great. You know? Yeah, no, I love this. Uh, the studios behind, uh, Shredder's Revenge. That's, uh, Dotemu, Dotemu. I can't remember how you pronounce their studio's name. Um, but they also did like Streets of Rage 4, which was fantastic a couple years prior to the Shredder's Revenge release. Um, and so like I'm full bought in basically on anything they do for these kind of licensed brings. And I would, I don't know if I'd call Streets of Rage really a license, but. Well, that's, I mean, that's a video like, game property. So like it's sort of, it exists in its own, you know, you don't have to get like Disney on the phone and be like, Hey, can we borrow your Simpsons? Yeah. You want to make a new <laughs> arcade game. Uh, Midas, what's a, what's a, like a nineties property that you'd love to see get this kind of treatment? All right. You lot ready. Yeah. This is what I need in my life. I need the people who made Shredder's Revenge to make me a biker mice for Mars. Ooh. Oh my God. I think there was one. I, Wasn't there a game for that? There was a biker. I don't even. I believe there was I, a biker mice for Mars, but I think it was back. It, it was, I think it was PS2 era. PS2. Get out of here. Maybe oh, 64. Yeah. We, we need. Was it older? We need that. The game? Yeah. We need that biker mice for Mars. We need um, each of them on their bikes with that retro style. Like that would be sick. Yeah, there was a Super NES game. I I don't really okay. have as many fond memories of this. I don't I have like weird feelings about the biker mice from Mars to begin with. Like they were I don't know. There was three of them. That's weird. <laughs> Why were there three mice? There should be four or two. <laughs> I don't know. I was a SWAT, uh, you could, a SWAT cats man myself. SWAT cats. You haven't always got you haven't always got three friends, you know. Sometimes it's just you and two of your friends. That's fair. Yeah. No, that's actually not the most far-fetched possibility. I feel like that is a license that is like we just heard that Ryan Reynolds is executive producing a new Biker Mice from Mars cartoon series. 
I think that has a smaller uh, smaller corner of the market than Ninja Turtles in terms of 90s nostalgia, but it is there. It's enough for people to kind of poke their heads up and go, wait, Yeah, there on. it is. There was a PS2 version. Are you I told you. kidding me? Why yeah. Why did you put that on PS? What the? What were they doing over there? I, I, it's like, I, I it's like very vividly remember. Thank you, Red, for having my back. I love our producer. I love that? Red. Why it's great. That? Um, Because they needed to. Yeah, Red. I feel so. insane. Yeah. Okay. They made a PS. They sure did. What? Yeah. So that was, see, that was the most recent one. But I remember the Super Nintendo one because one of my cousins had that one because he had the Super Nintendo and I had the Sega. So we played certain games at his place, certain games at mine. Um, but yeah, I remember the PS2 and I remember selling it at, when I was at GameStop. So yeah, it was, uh, it's, okay. it's, but I would say, cool. I will say Midas, it is, it is prime time for it to make a comeback with Ryan Reynolds doing a cartoon show. Like it makes all the more sense for them to try and get all in on the marketing and, bring it back kind of a uh, side scrolling style <laughs> now the funny <laughs> or thing remaster is that, uh i think yeah i think the company that's producing that is i believe the one that produced the toys that made us the netflix show which is like mm. that's in good hands that's the, i don't think that's a cash grab as much as it is like weird weird old nerds being like we need we need to do new stuff with these weird mice men I don't know. Yeah, biker mice from Mars. I didn't think we'd be talking about them today, but here we are doing <laughs> that. Uh, no, I mean the 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 one I keep coming back to, and, and the Disney Illusion Island gives me a lot of hope for this, is that it shows that Disney isn't afraid to you know loosen up on one of their licenses, let people mess around with the aesthetics, the style guide a little bit, and mm -hmm. also make a sort of you know not. It doesn't have to be Dreamlight Valley. It doesn't have to be a massive yeah. you know either cash grab or triple a thing you know isn't the illusion isle art style isn't there didn't they do like a cartoon for that as well i believe yeah i think yeah. there is like a cartoon so i think there's little precedence for that but it's still good mm -hmm. to see that did like you said disney is allowing people I mean, to like yeah. play around with the design of mickey mouse which a is something there people are pretty like they're kind of like okay you got x-men 97 on the horizon like maybe call up the dot dot e dot emu dot emu people and be like hey do a shredder's revenge for for x-men i really hope we get that because that i love good. the stay x-men side scrollers not as much as my ninja turtles but very close second for me yeah i don't know i just think it's, it'd be a, a good time like it, it seems like a, a, a like that's a scale of game that like we don't get often enough we got the Power Rangers battle for the grid, mm -hmm. which is like a fighting little fighting. Yeah, I actually, um, you know, it? no, I did not platinum. It was a mobile game, <laughs> um, but because that was the fighter, it was like the three on three. I think it's three on three fighter, if I remember correctly. Um, and I actually got to play against Jason David Frank oh, uh, at Comic Con years ago um and i won and i guess so i got i earned his autographs so i have an autograph of him That's it's on awesome. my shelf it's pretty great r.i.p to was him that, was that a mobile game i thought that was on consoles i believe they moved it i believe they added console ports to yes. it later yeah. um but yeah originally it was just mobile um, no, that's yeah that's a maybe that's the way you do it I, like but it's, it proves that you can make uh you know a game that like is a is it doing its best to be a solid video game mm -hmm. and also trying to make some money in the process and yeah, I don't know. I, I'm sure there's people out there who are like, I want a, I want a um, five player co op open world, uh, you know, Power Rangers game that's uh, persistent online. It's like that's probably not going to happen. But like a fighter yeah. that comes to mobile, that seems like a little more realistic. Honestly, I would I would actually like to see the Dotemu guys play make a new Power Rangers beat mode because there was the Power Rangers uh, side scroller back in the day you know on the Super Nintendo. That? Just tr Trini would hit people with her bow. <laughs> that's not what a bow is for like her, I, you mean kimberly but Kim yes trini kimberly. was yellow kimberly, kimberly yeah. was kimberly with the bow oh my god but yes but yes also that did make no sense or whatnot but i feel like they kind of had to back in those days because i feel like if you gave a character a ranged attack like that back then it just kind of would have yeah, broke no, the game yeah it would have broke and the whole point of those games was to break your pockets not for you to break the game yeah in the arcades and <laughs> when i think about it I swear Hawkeye was did that in the old X Men game as well. Ooh, I think he did too. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think he. That's... I think he could do both. When thing, but he used to hit people as well. Hitting people with a bow is. Some... I don't like it one bit. I'm not a fan <laughs> of that. I'm okay with it. I just it's bad. I like for to the get. Bow. It. I took archery in junior college. It's not good for the bows. It definitely isn't. But you know, I think Hawkeye can afford a few new bows. Yeah.